Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I'm making this video because Vivor sent me a smelting furnace. They contacted me and said, if you'll do a video, we'll send you a product. Which product would you like? I've always wanted a smelting furnace to melt aluminum and be able to cast aluminum. I don't really have a huge need for it, so therefore it's something that I probably wouldn't have spent a lot of money on. But they did send me the nicest furnace they have. They have several choices. And here it is in the box. And I thought we'd just unbox it together and see what comes in the box. I haven't opened it yet, so I don't really know anything about it. Right up front, we've got a little instruction manual there. Propane melting furnace, user manual. And I'm sure this has something to do with the flame and the gas going through there. And here's another one, so it's got like two of those. Looks like a manifold here of some sort. I'm sure these connect to that somehow or another. Those are the adjustments for your gas and here's probably where the gas connects up here's the next thing and that's a handle I think uh, probably for lifting the lid or something like that I'm just guessing because I don't know I haven't had this open yet this lid here is the next thing that pops up and it's got this uh, super high uh, temperature resistant it's some type of insulation of course the next thing that comes out of the box Looks like it's the hose and the regulators. And then I can get to the crucible, it looks like, and I'm hoping it's in good shape. These crucibles, uh, you know, are prone to breaking if you drop them. Like if you drop this on the concrete floor, it's gonna bust. This, I think, is a graphite crucible, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like it to be pretty well made. I'm pretty impressed. It's a large one. I got the large one because I thought, you know, there's no point in getting the little one. If you can get the big one, you know, you can always uh, melt smaller stuff in a big one, you know. And this looks like this is a fire brick. Maybe this goes in the bottom of the furnace. I don't really know for sure. I'm sure the instructions will tell me all that. Oh, here's a set of tongs. Well, that's kind of cool. They sent them. They're really stiff. I'll have to work with that a little bit. Maybe get a little oil or something on that. And we might enhance these to put some handles on these things. You know, I'm a woodworker and I can make handles and different things, so no problem. But uh, they're kind of plain Jane, but uh, they look like they would get the job done. So I'm happy with that. Here's, uh, whoops, something else fell out of there. I didn't know it was stuck to it couple, it looks like one more large, or maybe it's two more, maybe even three more bricks. I'm not really sure. These are bricks. Fortunately, they were in this foam and they didn't break. It looks like we're down to the brass tacks. Here's the actual furnace, it looks like. So here's the furnace itself. It looks pretty cool. I see, obviously, how the manifold goes in here. There's the two deals. Uh, so the manifold would stick together in here like this. Yeah, it's got that this insulation throughout, as you can see. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to try this thing out. So off camera, I'm going to go through the instructions, and then we'll turn the camera back on as we assemble this thing so you can see how it goes together. Well, I haven't actually read the instructions yet, but I don't think I'm going to need instructions on how to put this uh, handle on. I think we can get that done. You never know, I may not read the instructions at all until I'm ready to use it. It just depends how intuitive everything is. This here is fairly obvious. It can only go one way. You can't really put it on upside down. And if it weren't for my arthritic hands, this would be a piece of cake. It's just that everything is really hard to hold and everything is sore and hurts. It's even awkward handling the screws with the hands the way they are these days. And I'm going to tighten it down nice and snug because I don't want that thing coming off in the middle of a job. That's really nice. It's very well held on there and I'll lay it on top. 
99% sure I know how this goes too, although I may not know whether if it turns this direction or this direction. I don't really know, but I assume it's going to go sideways like this. So I'm just going to go that route for now. It can always be turned. Actually, these might want to go on the bottom. I don't know. If, nope, they're not going to get in the way anyway. Doesn't really matter. It's weird. It looks like it's off in both directions, according to the handle anyway. I'm just going by what's written on the handle. If you can see it there, it says off, on, off. So my assumption is midway is... Uh, okay, I can see. Now you can turn it all the way around. So I guess you can do it either way you want to. Alright, so that would be on like that. And... I'm going to put them in this direction, I think. And my assumption is that since these rings are on here, that's the depth you go to. That's an assumption right now, but seems like a logical assumption to me. I'm fairly sure that assumption is correct, that they go to that depth stop there. And then you tighten this back down, I think. We're about 90% uh, uh, installed already, I think. We've got the uh, hoses. Again, like just so you know, I haven't looked at the instructions or anything yet. I feel like most everything is intuitive so far. Which, in this modern world, that's kind of a unique thing in itself, just to have everything intuitive. You know, that's the way all computer programs should be. You know, they talk about smartphones and smart this and that and intelligence and artificial intelligence and all that. And yet, whenever you go to use a user program, so many of them are not intuitive at all. And they should be. They should just be, look at it and you should be able to figure out how it works. I'm glad that this thing is intuitive, at least up to this point. These kinds of things bug me to death, so I'm just going to get rid of it, even though it's a warning. It's not that I won't read the warning. I will read the warning, but I don't want it attached permanently here. It bugs me, so that's coming off. Coil here is uh, kind of stiff, but it's fairly obvious it goes on here. It goes on to the manifold. Uh, unfortunately, that Boy, that thing's stiff. That should turn. I'm just 99% sure, but it don't. That's not good. I don't think you're supposed to spin the whole hose, or at least I wouldn't think so. You would think that would spin, but it doesn't seem to. I don't want to force it, because maybe you are supposed to spin the whole hose. It sure won't spin by hand. You can't move it. It's tight. So I'm going to have to go to the directions there because I don't know if you're supposed to uh, just turn that end or spin the whole hose. If you're supposed to turn the end, it ain't doing that right now, I can tell you. Well, to be clear, the instructions aren't clear on whether or not this end's supposed to spin or not. Typically, they wouldn't be. Typically, it's supposed to spin. All it says here is connect the air uh, line to the... Uh, connector and tighten the nut. And it's showing a picture there. It's a good clear picture. I'm not sure I get the wording of that. I'm going to see if it will let me turn that because this hose is so stiff it would be very hard to spin the whole hose and everything. So let me get my tools here and we'll see how it goes from there. Well as of right now this doesn't really want to spin. Um, there it goes. I think it's going to go ahead and spin Boy, it's tight. I gotta say that. I really wouldn't have thought that would have been that tight. Alright, I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna have to hold on to that to keep that from spinning. You know, I'm usually pretty good with this mechanical stuff. And this is kind of difficult right here. If I had one more hand to push against this, 
I guess I could get a vise out or something and try to hold this still because it's good it takes a lot of force to push this to get this to start threading. I, there's some rubber in here and I don't know if it's hitting that rubber or what. Maybe I just got it. Maybe. I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. I'm not really hitting any resistance yet. And you definitely want to hit resistance when you're working with a gas line. There it is, finally. There it's finally snugging up. And I'll go to it's good and good and snug. There, so we got that. Everything else looks to be and seems to be very, very easy, very well put together. So now the crucible should just fit inside, of course. Now there, you may need to put the fire brick in. I'm just throwing it in there temporarily. But uh, I'll have to look at the directions on how to use this thing. But as far as I can tell, we're fully assembled, other than the potential for putting fire brick in. Let me read the directions and we'll see what our next step is. Well, my friends, I uh, looked through the uh, instructions the best I can. And quite honestly, it doesn't say anything to do with these bricks. It shows them in there as part of the things that come with it, but it doesn't tell you what to do with them. So my assumption, and it's just an assumption, is that this smaller one will go in the bottom of the furnace. It just seems to make sense to me. My assumption is that this one is the one that you keep outside and you because it won't fit in there for one thing. And uh, this is what you set your crucible on and, and that kind of thing. Um, that's just a total assumption on my part because I don't know. It doesn't tell you. So really all there is to it at this point is to hook this up to a propane tank and use it according to the directions. Of course, you've got to be careful with all that. And I do have some experience with uh, using gas and, and I'll be checking for leaks and all those kinds of things before we get started. And I will wear appropriate safety gear. Um, you know, I'm going to wear boots and I'm going to have some uh, fireproof gloves. And I'll probably wear a shop apron, which is made out of leather, uh, just as a little bit of a precaution in case something would splash. But uh, overall, I think uh, it looks like a good machine, and uh, I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Well, my friends, assuming that my video turned out on the unboxing of this uh, furnace, you've seen all that. It's all hooked up and ready to go. Uh, the only thing I need to do yet, and I will do this before I powered on is I'm going to check all the fittings with soapy water but I just wanted to show you I also have protective gear this is just a welding helmet but it's the best I've got and it's clear I mean with the with the flap up it's clear so I'm going to use this anytime I'm messing with the melt molted uh, metal I mean I'll only wear this when I'm actually going to open the furnace and pour metal and that kind of thing I've got leather gloves and I've got leather apron here so I'm going to take as many precautions as I can. I've got, uh, you know, blue jeans on and leather boots. But this leather apron goes down pretty far. So that's about as good of precautions as I can take. I've never done this before, so I'm trying to be a little extra careful. The aluminum I plan to melt uh, is uh, extruded aluminum here. And then I just got regular aluminum soda cans. The furnace came with these tongs and I think we're going to use them on this, you know, on this first attempt. I'm going to probably try to make some better tongs and things. These are not bad. I mean, they're quarter inch steel and stuff. They're pretty stout. But I think we could do better uh, if we had a little better uh, setup for the pouring and everything. And then the only other thing I made was I just made this little wand. And this is just a, kind of like a stir stick where I can go in and clean off the dross. Um, I just it's just a piece of rebar that I flattened the end out on it and at least I think this will help me get rid of the dross that's the only thing I've made in addition to what came in the uh, package okay I'm gonna light the furnace I you know never lit this before I'm gonna turn uh, the pressure really low at first and then adjust it as we go um, I've, I've already tested all the connections the ones that came from the factory everything and everything looks good, no, no leaks. I test them with soapy water. I'm going to turn this up to around maybe 
four or five PSI, which is probably really low, but I figure better to start low than to go too high. Let's see how this goes. Well, I'm glad I didn't turn it up much more than that because that seems pretty hot to me. That seems pretty good. I'm going to just leave it right there for now. I really don't know if that's enough heat or not. It's hard to say, but it all looks real good so far. I'll time this and turn it back on whenever we get close. It's only been uh, less than three minutes. The aluminum's starting to melt, but it's laying on top of the crucible in a place or two. So I'm gonna just try to push it down in there. I'm going to add several soda cans. I'm going to add three at a time. It, like I said, it's only been a couple of minutes. It's really heating up fast. Okay, it's only been a few more minutes. In total, it's only been seven minutes. So it's really going fast. I think those cans have already melted. I'm gonna go ahead and put a few more cans in. It really does melt much quicker than I expected. I, I thought we'd be 30 minutes into this, and like I said, we're only about seven minutes into it. So it's really going fast, and probably would be faster if I was more prepared. So, so far, I'm very impressed with the furnace. Some people say I should have burned it in first. You know, I don't much care about all that. If it, you know, I figure it's gonna be just fine. Uh, you burn it in, or you just start heating with it right at the beginning. Either way, it gets really hot. So I don't see much, much issue. It's out in the open here where all the fumes and things can escape. So I'm not too worried about it. I think I'm gonna add three more cans just for fun. On this first pour, I'm not gonna add anything to the aluminum. I'm just going to pour it raw like this I'm gonna to try to scrape off the dross, don't get me wrong, but I'm gonna pour it into these uh, tubes over here and we're just gonna see what happens. If it just is a total disaster, well, that's okay. I'm fine with that. But I'm just trying to see how it all goes because I know nothing about this. Seems to really work well. I'm a little leery about the pouring, I'll be honest, because these tongs are not gonna make it easy to pour, especially not pour into those little tiny tubes. It'll just be what it is, and uh, like I said, I'll be wearing my face shield, and if it hits the ground, well, it'll be all right. I'm not too worried about it. Actually, I think I'm gonna move it out on the uh, gravel, though, to pour, and the reason is because I heard that if it falls on concrete, it can splatter and cause uh, the concrete to, to uh, Okay, I'm going to scrape the dross off and we're going to try a pour and we'll just see how it goes.
that went okay. Uh, you know, I learned a few things and I expected to, uh, that to run out of the bottom of that uh, tube and it did. Um, ran out more than I thought it would though and it's still running out unfortunately. Oh, it melted that uh, tube. That galvanized pipe, it melted that pipe. Well, I learned something there too. I just thought that, you know, that galvanized steel pipe would hold that, but it didn't. It melted the bottom out of it. So, like I said, if it turns out to be a disaster, I'll learn something. And I learned something, obviously. I never would have dreamed that that hot aluminum would melt that pipe. Well, my friends, obviously I was wrong about this melting this pipe. I didn't think it would do that. But if you look at what I see, and I think you can see that, that's what it looks like it did, doesn't it? It looks like it melted the pipe at the bottom and it all flayed out. But what, when you look at the bottom, you can see there's a clear ring around there. So I don't think it melted the pipe. I think it just ran around, pulled up around it, and melted maybe the coating off of the pipe or something. I really don't know how to describe what that did exactly. Made a mess, I know that. And, and you can see it, it swelled up up here. It really did look like it melted the pipe. So I don't know what you would call that exactly, but obviously it was a fail. <laughs> I guess you could just call it that. I'm not one to be deterred uh, real easily, so I'm going to give it another shot, but I'm going to try a different tactic. So stick with me and we'll see how that goes. Just thought I'd show you the other piece of pipe that I poured the uh, aluminum into. You can see it basically worked. Unfortunately, it, it just was just very small amount. It's only about this deep. But I can't get that out. So I really thought that pouring it into a piece of metal like this, the aluminum would cool and shrink and fall out later. I've seen other YouTubers do that, but obviously they were using either a different kind of pipe or a different kind of aluminum or something because it didn't work for me. It is loose. I can, I can sort of make it move but I can't quite get it out of there um, more than likely I'll get it out but uh, I just thought I'd show you that it isn't easy I really thought it would just more or less be able to be popped out of there fairly simply so I may have to find a different way to mold uh, stock for turning on the lathe and of course I could always go to sand casting I understand that but uh, I was trying to find a simple way nothing's easy so I thought I'd see if I could knock this little puck out of this uh, piece of pipe by heating the pipe down here first and then trying to tap it out. Let's see if that works. Kind of doubt it, but you never know. See if that did anything. Yeah, might have done a little bit. Yeah, moved it a sixteenth of an inch, but it didn't come out. And the pipe is trying to move in the vise is one of the problems. Let me just try this and I'll just hit it hard and see if that'll knock it out. Nope. Nope. think that would be that hard to knock out of there. I really didn't. I thought that would be fairly easy to get out. Not working. Have to try another tactic. Well my friends, just another little detour. I, you can see I'm starting to get this little plug to come out, but it isn't easy at all. I really didn't think this would be an issue. Now there could be a problem. It could be that there was a ledge on the inside of this pipe and maybe I didn't realize that. I'll maybe be able to tell that more once I get the plug out of there. But I've sprayed a little WD down in there and the WD is penetrating around this. So maybe, maybe I'll be able to drive it out. I'm getting close. I've got the uh, vice spread where it's just barely catching the pipe. It's a thin wall pipe, so it's really hard to do this. 
you know, I mean, a thicker wall pipe would probably would have been the way to go. Well, I'll tell you what, I can see what part of the problem is. There was some corrosion and uh, pitting on the inside of this pipe, and so the aluminum locked into those pits. That's where I had to drive it out. So, while that didn't work, failures, you learn something, so in a way, you don't really fail when you uh, are doing something for the first time. You just uh, are learning. It's a learning curve. Now I know what doesn't work. <laughs> and we'll try something else on the next one. Now moving on to the one that uh, really looked deformed and I do think there is some deformity there. I knocked off one piece of aluminum already. I'm going to see if I can knock off some more of it. Maybe not. Oh my gosh. Yeah that first little piece knocked off right here and there is some real deformity right here in the pipe. I don't know, you know, again, whether it's some of that coating or what it is. But this part here really seems to be adhered to that pipe. And they said welding aluminum was hard. <laughs> I sure did weld it to this piece of pipe. Well, I'm recovering the aluminum slowly but surely. So basically that's what I wanted to end up with is a nice round of aluminum that I can use on the metal lathe to turn and all that. Of course this didn't work obviously, but uh, I'm about to break this piece off of this old piece of pipe. You had to, I finally had to go to you know brute force. I pressed this out with uh, my shop press and uh, I'm beating this off with a hammer and so I've recovered most of the aluminum that uh, I initially poured. That's most of it. In fact, it's 95% of it. So I'm good there. And now we're set up to try again. I'm all ready to try round two on my smelting. I've uh, got everything in good shape, I think. Let me show you what we're doing. First of all, the furnace it's got the crucible in here, and you can see there's a lot of, uh, you know, aluminum uh, ingots and things. There's a lot of aluminum in here, and uh, I have uh, some cutoffs from extrusions and things, so there's quite a bit of heavy aluminum, enough to do what I want to do. This looks a little bit janky, but uh, we're going to do with it. See, I've blackened the inside of that pipe with my... Um, what people would call an acetylene torch, but in this case, I didn't have acetylene. I had a propane, and anyway, I turned it on very light, and it sooted up the inside of there, so I'm hoping that'll be a good release agent. This is stuck on the end of this piece of steel right here. It could tip over, but it's pretty solid. I turned the bottom of that good and flat, so it's pretty solid. I'm just going to take my chances and pour into it. The uh, other pipe is just for overflow. So we're ready to give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to start from turning on the furnace. Alright, we're going to try to light it. Okay, it's lit. Now we'll put the uh, lid on it. I've only got a couple of PSI going into that. I mean, it only takes just a tiny amount. It's amazing how minimal amount of uh, gas it takes. And the time right now, I'm going to look at my clock. The time right now is 1028. So let's see how long it takes to get it to be able to pour it. like the slag is coming off real good. There's very little slag this time. I think we're probably ready to try it. I'm going to give it a few more minutes. 
I'm just going to give it a few more minutes. I would like, like for it to be really molten, and I think it is, but I, it might just be a little bit thick yet. It's been 18 minutes and 50 seconds, so almost 19 minutes since we started it. I didn't have it turned up as high as I did yesterday, and yesterday it, it melted it much faster. But I also have more aluminum in there today, I think, too. And more solid aluminum. In other words, thicker pieces. So that makes a difference. Well, right or wrong, I'm gonna give it a shot. Here we go. Okay, everything's all shut off. The aluminum poured really well. Um, it's shrinking up as you can see. I think you can see there that it's shrinking. I had a little bit left over to pour in the other thing. I am definitely gonna have to make me a good pour handle because the handle that comes with that is not good for pouring. I like everything about the outfit except for the pouring part. Even taking it out is okay with me. I don't have much of a problem with that. But uh, pouring is, is a, a difficult aspect and that's not working out real well. But I got the job done. We're gonna give this plenty of time to cool off and then I can show you what it looks like after it's cooled. My friends, it's been several hours later and I brought this inside just to get it out of the heat of the day and it's all cooled off except for the fact that it's hot because it's been out in the sun. So let's see, can I get this apart? That's the first question. Did it stick too tight or? Well, actually it feels like it's gonna come loose. I can feel it moving. I don't think it's gonna be much of an issue. Everything's a hammer. You can hear it, it's wiggling, and I think I'm getting it. There we go, it's coming. There it goes. Ah. Ah. It's almost off. There it is, it's off. Now, that's what it looks like on the inside. And, oh, it's loose, look at that. It almost slid out. So it's definitely not going to be real hard to press out because it's loose in there. I did use the torch and put all the soot inside the pipe. So that might be why it's releasing much easier. But I also suspect, look at there, I didn't even have to press it out. I just pulled it out. Now that's what I call easy. I like to do what's easy. Now I can see there's a crystal structure in this top part here that shrunk up. This part looks really good from about here down. Looks really good and really solid. My guess is that this from here, about this much of it's good and machinable. This part up here is probably not, though you never know. Once you turn it down, it might be solid on the inside. You, d you just don't know. But that's what I was going for, was just to get a, a, a blank like that that I can put in my metal lathe and then turn down and make small parts. Now let's see this. I can tell it's already loose too. Now I didn't put any release agent in this. But this is a thicker wall pipe. Look at there, it's going to come out on its own too. So there you go. This was just an overpour. And you can see it didn't really amount to anything. But this will just be a, an ingot that I can remelt later. Overall, I'm very happy with that. Th this is kind of a small spot right here. And I think since this is the first one, I think I'm just going to saw through that and look at it in cross section and see what it looks like since this is the area that looks uh, to be granulated and etc. Well my friends I really couldn't be any happier with my Vivor smelting furnace. 
I would like for you to be sure to check out the Vivor Furnace. Go to their site. I'll put post links in the description of this video and there should be some cards that you can click on as well. Here's the final product. As I mentioned, I would, wanted to saw that in half, so I did. I sawed it in half, and both halves are solid, even where it had shrunk quite a bit. So really, it looks to me like the internal structure of the billet here, or whatever you want to call this, looks to be perfectly solid. So I'm incredibly happy with this. This will give me good stock to turn down on my metal lathe. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the Vivor Smelting Furnace because it is the real deal. Thank you for watching.